next start then shall we um i have made a card already and what i thought i would do because this set is a little bit different in as much as there are more than just the one die to cut it out i thought we'd go through the whole the whole system from start to finish so um doing the stencils die cutting it and then embossing it so i'm using these two hummingbird embossing folder and layering stencils they're divine they're absolutely divine i'm using this one today on monday i'm going to use the butterfly rose frame and on thursday next week i'm going to use the peacock i've also used this stencil out of this little set um only on the background of the card i've already made i'm not using it today I'm, i've used something else on today's card i've used the texture stamps on today's card i didn't use it on the original but i you know how much i love this set it's just so useful so i've used those okay i've used the water droplets i've used that on both cards and um, just a little bit of embossing behind the bird now i've used on my original card i've used this on today's card your choice so think about it as i'm going along i've got one of these cut or i've got one of these cut and you decide which one i'm going to use when i show you today's card think about it and then as we get towards putting the card together you let me know which one you want me to use okay it'll all become clear i promise um, on the original card I've used a sentiment from this fabulous set and I've used the it's your special day okay I haven't used anything else just that one sentiment but I haven't used it on today's card on today's card I've used these sentiments because they're just so useful I've got a load cut here and stamped ready to put on cards so I thought well I might as well use one of those no idea if any of this is in stock um, and I've used the nested scallops and plain circles to put my background behind the bird. OK, right. So this is where we're headed. OK, so this was the card that I put together. Now you can see that the pansy corner is here. I've just embossed it in white card and I've glued it down. I've glued it off the edge of the card and I've just trimmed it down so that it fits the edge of the card perfectly. OK, so you can see I've used the water droplets in the background. Now this one, I embossed the card and then cut the circle out. And obviously that flattens some of the embossing. But I didn't want to put it back. Because it was sort of in the background, I was quite happy for it to have flattened some of those um, water droplets. Okay, But on today's, the water droplets will be more pronounced. Okay? And I'm not using white card. And... I've also changed the sentiment slightly. I've actually used the same word in more or less. So it's on your special day as opposed to it's your special day. Now this one here, I know I shouldn't tell you this because you wouldn't know if I didn't tell you. But I made a boo-boo underneath here and I stamped it's your special day. And then I thought I'd try and be clever. You should never try and be clever, should you? Um, I thought I'll shadow stamp it and I'll move the sentiment slightly and I'll do it in black as well. It looked a right mess. So in order to cover up my boo-boo, I stamped this onto um, one of the banners and then cut another banner in black and gave it a drop shadow. That way it hides my complete mess underneath. Today I thought I'd do a similar effect, but I'd use one of the banner sentiments instead. And because it's already stamped in purple, it will fit in perfectly with the colours that I've used today okay so that's where we're headed but today's will look ever so slightly different not a great deal just a little bit okay so there are uh, 12 11 11 stencils in this set but trust me when I say you need every single one of them you know what Lisa's like if you need 11 you'll get 11 if you could do it with four you'll get four but the detail that you get on here, I mean, you look at that. The detail that's on there is just outstanding, isn't it? And, and you wouldn't get that with four stencils. You really wouldn't. So when you need 11, you'll get 11. OK, so let's make a start then. 
I'm going to go, I'm using a mix of sets of Lisa's inks. Um, some of these are set one, but the majority of what I'm using today is set two. And set two, for me, it, it fills all those little gaps in that set one left. But set two, I think, just boosts your, your stash, boosts your possibilities for colour. It's just an outstanding set of inks. And it's such a fabulous price as well. I have a feeling these these may be on TV next week. I'm not 100% certain, but um, well worth the investment. I don't have any of my other um, matte chalk inks or other ink pads. I've sold them all because for me, these are the best. And I don't use anything else. So what's the point in me keeping them? So I'm using these. So we're going to start off with sugar candy okay i'm going to go primarily with similar colors to what i used on my original card purely and simply because i like the colors they're pink and purple and they're just perfect i'm going in with my sugar candy but i am going to go quite light here she said hoping she hasn't put too much ink on this brush you can see i've got sugar candy on by the fact that it's sort of picking up on the lip of this stencil but actually on the card there isn't a great deal of color at all and that's exactly what I want. I want the first layer to be really quite pale because my extra colours that are going on top are going to lift these flowers to a whole new level. And you can see I'm not putting much pressure because of where I'm holding the um, brush. Holding the brush further back will mean that you've got less pressure on the, the head of the brush. So further back you hold it, the less pressure you'll get. So that's layer one. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Such a beautiful colour. Now this little one here, when I first put it on, I thought, right, OK, what's that then? I couldn't I couldn't work it out till I sat and looked at the picture. And it's all the little stems of the leaves and flowers and things. So for this one, I'm going to use my almond frosting. And this colour in this second set is just the best colour. It really is. You can go as light as you want. You can go as dark as you want. If you put sort of like two or three layers on, you'll get a really, really beautiful colour. But if you want it sort of less obvious, then just one layer. And it's it's a beautiful colour. It really is. I don't know where she thought of the colours, but just perfect. Just perfect. See, it doesn't look much. But when you put it all together, it really does make a difference. So now we're coming in with the leaves. Now there's three stencils, I think, that cover the leaves. And I thought what I would do is do them in two completely different shades. So for the first one, I'm going in with um, my Margarita. And again, this colour is it's divine. It's just divine. It's so bright and vibrant. It's really, really beautiful. OK, so I've gone quite heavy with this margarita because it's, as I said, a really lovely, vibrant green. And I want it to stand out because my other green is going to be a mix of yellow and blue. OK, I love that green. I think it's just outstanding. And again, this is set two. So for this second set, I'm going to go a yellow and blue mix. Um, because I really like the um, juicy pineapple and I've used I'm going to use surf up over the top of this juicy pineapple because it's going to give me a really beautiful um, sort of emeraldy green um, and it's, it's just a green I really like so I'm going quite heavy with the yellow because obviously the surf up is quite a deep blue beautiful um, sort of aquary blue so I want the yellow to, to sort of have a really deep base before I add that blue on top. But you can see how beautifully these blend and how they how they go down on the paper. They're just they're just fabulous. OK, so that's that's quite heavy. I'm quite, quite happy with that. So then I'm going to come in with my surf soap and add that over the top. 
quick change of the brush and come in with the surf soft and it's just going to give an absolutely glorious green it's sort of um it's almost a sea green <clears throat> you know that that beautiful green that you get when you're abroad and you look at the waters um i, I just think that the, the, the sort of the blue that you get in the sea this is this is what you'll get so because i've gone down quite heavy with that yellow it's really taking this blue really really well so it's going to give me a really gorgeous green look at that now the difference in those greens is just outstanding don't you think so on top of that now i'm going to be putting the veins of the leaves on okay now i'm going to go quite sort of i suppose a bit rogue if you like i'm going to add purple to the veins <clears throat> because i just think to add a completely different color to the veins will just make those leaves pop so you could add a darker green if you wanted to um but for me the purple just sort of really makes them pop a little bit so i take quite a bit of the ink off my brush and start off reasonably light but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go reasonably light on the lighter green leaves and then i'm going to go a little bit heavier on the darker green leaves because obviously the darker green is going to need something a little bit heavier to sort of make it stand out if you like okay so now i'm going to go in a little bit heavier on those darker green leaves because i want the I want the veins to really sort of pop on these as well it doesn't matter if i sort of go a little bit over the um lighter green i'm not worried because it'll all look it's all relevant and it'll all look fabulous anyway so let's just make sure that i've got all those veins yeah i think so do you see what i mean it just lifts those leaves that little bit more um, it might it might be a little bit too far away but when I lift it up at the end you will notice what I mean so now we're going to come in and we're going to add some detail to these flowers all right now I'm going to go um what did I do on these I'm going to go sugar candy on these but not overly heavy because my others are going to be really a little bit more vibrant because I'm using a different color so I'm going to start off light, so I'm taking quite a bit of ink off my brush and I'm literally starting in the middle of that flower and working my way out. Okay, so it's not all going to be the same shade, but it is going to look fabulous. So start in the middle, work my way out and then when I lift it off, I'll decide whether I need to add any more. I think I'm happy with that so then we're going to come in with our other flowers now you can see here there's two that aren't already inked okay but I'm going to go in there with a different pink because I want that pink to sort of pop all right so what did I go with yesterday these I'm going to do in shocking pink so let's do these first I'm just going to use a smaller brush just because I don't want to overflow onto here too much. So if I go in with a smaller brush, it'll give me a little bit more control over that, over that ink. So again, I'm starting in the middle and I'm working my way out so that I'm not necessarily filling the whole of the flower with the same depth of colour. Okay, and I'm taking my ink out of the lid. So I've taken the ink that I've taken off my brush in the first place and just adding it to the to the flowers that I need it to to be added to. I might actually lift a little bit more off my ink pad in a second. And don't forget to go both ways around. That way you won't end up with shadow on one side and not on the other. OK, let's just have a quick look at that. I think I could probably go a little bit darker with that. So we'll go in again and work my way out. 
and I like the centres to be a little bit darker than the rest of the flower because when you look at flowers the centres of your flowers are usually a little bit darker aren't they because of the fact that the light is trapped inside that flower yeah that's better that's better so these I'm going to do the background in the same sugar candy that I started with okay so I'm not adding any more ink to my brush I'm just using the ink that was left on the brush in the first place and you can see I'm putting a little bit more pressure on because I'm using whatever ink is on here but I want it to be obvious but not you know not sort of too in your face as it were so I'm quite happy with that I like that so then we're going to start and we're coming on to the feathers okay now then what did I start with yesterday I started with sweet violet again I'm coming reasonably lightly but I can add more if I need to <clears throat> So I'm coming in on the tail. You can see how fabulously these blend that colour. They're just stunning ink pads. Now I'm going around with a, a base colour first. And then what I'll do is just add a little bit more colour around the edges. Okay. So I've done the middle. And then I'm just going to go around and add a little bit more just on the edges of those feathers. You don't have to do this, but I just like the effect when you've finished. Same with the bird, we'll see what I mean in a second. So on here, I've got another flower here. And I'm going to go and add um, purple to this flower just to make it look a little bit different to all the others. OK, so I'm using whatever ink is on my brush, not re-inking it. I'm just adding a little bit of ink to that just so it looks a little bit different to all of the others. OK. So now we're on to number nine and now we're going to be starting to look at the bird. OK. So this little bit here is a bit of, is a bit of, mm, mm, mm. I'm trying to decide what it is now. A bit of green, I think. Let's just add a tiny little bit of green in the background or blue or whatever and see if that looks okay. Yeah, that's fine. OK, so now I'm going to come to my bird. Now, my bird is going to start off with a layer of painted eggshell. Again, this is from set two inks and it, it just gives me what I want. It's um, a sort of a, I don't know, a, a petroly greeny blue. Um, it's, it's a fabulous colour. So I'm going to come quite light to start off with. Because I'm adding more colours to this bird than I've got on my brush here. I'm not just going to leave it as painted eggshell. I'm going to add something else in a second. And then you'll see we've got the start of the wreath here. And the wreath is going to be um, pink and purple to match with everything else. So let's start off with the purple. And just fill this in. I mean, considering there's 11 stencils on here <clears throat> and I've been talking as well and sort of trying to watch your comments, it's so quick and so easy. It's just, it's, so, it's, it's really quite mindful, I think, stenciling. So if you're having a bad day or you're having a bad week, get your stencils out and um, give it a go because I really think it would help helps me anyway okay so i've done the bird uh, sorry i've done the, the first bit of the frame so now before i just move this out of the way i'm just going to add a little bit of um eucalyptus leaves sounds a bit weird but trust me it's not it's just a beautiful color so i'm going to take some of the ink off in my lid and i'm just going to come 
ever so gently all the way around the edge of the bird okay so the middle of the bird here is going to be really quite light but the edges of the bird around here are going to be quite dark with that eucalyptus leaves again a really lovely colour from set two and I just think you know if you've got set one really why would you not have set two so I've come around the edge of there with that eucalyptus and then what I'm going to do round here is come in with shocking pink and again sounds a bit mad but trust me when I've finished it won't be it really won't so let's use the lid again and just come in ever so slightly so you're brushing most of the ink is on the on the stencil but you are coming in and adding a little bit more colour to sort of where the chest area is on that bird so I'd go a little bit heavier right at the edge because obviously that's where the shadow is on the bird and then drag it through as far as you want to uh, okay it looks odd now but trust me when I've finished and it's die cut and it's embossed it's amazing okay so you can see there I've got the basis of my bird now and well wow I've only got two stencils left it's just mm, 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 fantastic so I'm going to come here and you can see there's there's like a little accent on the feathers and again I'm going to come in here with my shocking pink just because I think the pink and the purple complement each other beautifully I think when I'd when I'd actually finished the one that I did yesterday I was so pleased with it um, and I was pleased that I'd gone with the set two inks as well really because the colours just sort of scream you know hummingbirds are something tropical aren't they there's something really magical about a hummingbird I think and these colours just just cry out to be used on something like this so just add a little bit of that shocking pink onto those tail feathers as well and whilst it doesn't look much on here when you've finished and you've die cut it and you've embossed it trust me it really does make a difference so first off here I am just going to add a little bit of dark orange I'm using early sunrise which sounds a bit mad because it's quite a bright orange but when you see the finished effect I think you'll agree that it's just it's just spot on now you can see there that there's also the eye on this stencil and for the eye I thought I would use the anthracite because it's not it's not totally black but it's dark enough to make a difference so I've literally just gone in with that anthracite like that simple as okay so that's all the detail on there and it's it just looks amazing it's just fabulous now then when I did the one I showed you when I started this bit here I used rhubarb jam and when I'd finished I, I didn't like it it was it was completely the wrong colour I mean I love rhubarb jam the the colour of rhubarb jam is just glorious but it didn't match this card so I completely changed my mind for today I did go over the rhubarb jam with another colour but I am going to change this and I'm going to do this with shocking pink and I'm going to stretch it round into the markings on the bird's neck as well okay so I'm going in with our shocking pink and I am going to go reasonably heavy with this because I want these to really stand out and I want that pink to stand out on his neck as well so I've sort of done a layer and then I've come back and I've done another layer okay and then the other part of this wreath is going to be shocking pink as well just because I think these two colours look perfect together so we're going in with our shocking pink in this little aperture here and you can either brush it through or circle it through or dab it through it's entirely up to you um, just whatever whatever look you want really because you'll get a different look with whichever effect you you use 
whichever the technique rather that you use so i like the circle effect because it just fills the aperture quite gently you know you're not going to go and sort of saturate the cord if you like but you are going to get a fabulous colour through that aperture so dead quick dead easy and as i say this is the last the last stencil so it hasn't really taken us very long at all has it now the centers of these flowers again i, I did with rhubarb jam and i wasn't i wasn't 100 percent happy with it so i think on this occasion what i'm actually going to go in with is um either purple or green what shall i do let's just finish his beak first and i'm going in with my coral beach because this is the top of his beak so the top of his beak is going to be lighter than the bottom of his beak okay so that's his that's his beak done i've got a little hole here on my stencil for his eye and i could use white ink but i thought i'd use a gel pen instead because it's just as easy now i need to decide what color to go i think i'm going to use margarita just for the centers of those flowers might look weird don't know but we're going to use margarita we just want to be careful not to get any margarita on the end of his beak because it is quite close to the middle of that flower That look awful, I don't know, but I have. And what I am going to do just before I take this off is I'm just going to brush through this shocking pink just on the edge with whatever purple is left on that brush, just like that. So let's just put those brushes out of the way and my ink pads and lift that off. I just think that's fabulous. It's just such a gorgeous set. And you can actually stencil the bird on its own if you wanted to. Some of the samples that you will see off the girls in the group um, have got the hummingbird completely separate. And it, it just looks amazing. It's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Right. So we've done our stenciling. Now we need to die cut it. Okay. Now, I think Lisa, if I remember rightly, she did show you the stencils for the hummingbird. And there are more than one. OK, you can either do them in two passes or you can do them all in one go. All right. I'm going to have a go at doing them all in one go today. I did them in two passes yesterday and it was for me, it worked, I think, better to do them in two passes. But because we're on a live I think I'll try it and just do it as one pass. So I'm just going to pop a bit of tape on there to keep that in place. And then I'm just going to use these other three dies, which are just fabulous, to cut out these extra little bits on this set. OK, so I'm going to put my tape so that it sits in the middle. So I'm hopefully not going to take any of my colouring off my um stenciling that i've just done and then this one's going to sit here just be careful how you place it because you don't want to spoil all that fabulous stenciling that you've just done i'm going to pop a little bit of tape on there and then this one will sit round here i mean what a what a genius idea to have the whole of the circle cutting out as well so you've got the background that you can do something completely different with and just get another piece of tape and stick that in the middle there and hold that down so bear with while i just run it through lift the main one off and then lift these off like so how amazing does that look isn't it gorgeous isn't it just brilliant? What a fabulous idea. I think it's, uh, Lisa, awesome. Absolutely awesome. Right, so now we're going to emboss it. And trust me, 
once you emboss it oh my days oh my days it looks stunning i mean it looks great anyway but once you've once you've embossed it and just make sure that you line it up and that you've got all your little details in the right place and then pop it down and run it through okay <laughs> look at that isn't that amazing don't you think that looks just stunning isn't it gorgeous and look at the deboss look at the detail that you get on these embossing folders isn't it fabulous it, well even even down to on the bird there are little sort of um like feathers so you've got embossing detail on this bird here you won't see it on the camera but trust me when you get it home the detail that Lisa's gone to with the embossing on this is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. So that's how you die cut it. That's how you emboss it. I mean, no, you will know how to emboss. I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs or anything. But, you know, you can put it all through in one pass. Um, you don't have to do it in two passes. You can if you're feeling not too brave, but it will work. So don't worry about it too much. Okay, so on this one, I don't know whether you can see, it's quite pale, but I did use that stencil in the background here. It is really quite pale. I don't, I'm not sure you're going to be able to pick it up, but it is really quite pale, um, just to give it a little bit of interest in the background. But this, I wanted to go a little bit more, hoo -hoo, you know what I mean? Just a little bit more in your face. So my hummingbird is going in the middle here, but I don't want to see this in the background i want this to look completely different so this is where my water droplets comes in and my water droplets is going behind the bird now i'm just going to have a mess around with it and find the best the best placement for those bubbles i think i want that big one so that you can see it and you'll see that this i think this is the one, two, three, four, fifth circle in from the outside. So this one here, and it fits that wreath shape perfectly. So you won't see the circle that you've cut out when you pull it behind. Okay, you, you just won't. It won't show. Um, I mean, if you want it to show and you want it like a bigger circle, then cut a bigger one and cut one of the scallops as well so that you've got sort of... um a double frame if you like but I like this effect and um, so I'm just going to add my glue to my frame and then I'm going to stick it down onto that card and then I'm going to just add my embossed flowers on the corner of this card okay so let's add this down here let's decide where I'm going to put it just add that so you can't see the stitching but it just fits perfectly and i've used lisa's glue so we all know it's going to stick because it's just awesome glue okay now i am just going to add a couple of little um 3d pads on the back of this bird because I want it all to be level. I don't want there to be any dip when I add it to the card. Okay, so I'm just going to add three little, three little pads down to the back of this so that I can put this down in the middle here. All right, but before I do that, I want my decoration in the corner. And this decoration, for me, this balances this out. Okay. So I did toy with the idea of putting one both sides, but for me, I think it would have been too much because I think this balances this. If I'd have put one this end as well, it would have just it would have just overpowered the, the bird in the middle. So I just went with the one. So that's the pansy corner, which is going there or depending on which one you think, 
I could use the daisy corner in the corner. So you decide, you tell me which one should I use? Should I stick with the same one that I used on the original? So should I stick with the pansy? Or should I go with the daisy? It's going to look completely different. Um, but it's sort of, I think these flowers look quite similar to the flowers in here. Yeah? Daisy. Daisy. Same. Pansy. 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 Okay, Pansy wins then. Daisy. 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 Oh. Oh, now I'm torn now. Okay, let's do the daisy so that you can see how, how different it looks. Okay. So, again, I'm not going to glue it so that it sits within the card. I'm going to glue it so that it's off the edge of the card. And then I'm going to trim off what I don't need. Okay. So... Let's pop that about there, I think. So let's add my glue to this. And then just see what it looks like. It's going to look quite a bit different, but at least you'll know whether to use one or t'other. Let's add that down to the corner first. And hang it off the edge. Okay, so you can see that... Although I went a bit mad with my texture stamp, um, let me show you which one I used, just while that glue is drying a bit. So I've used this one, and this is second generation um, sugar candy. So I inked it, stamped it on a piece of paper, and then stamped it on the card, so that it's not the full-blown colour, it's a little bit more muted. Okay, so let's put that down there and then trim the edges off so there's my die cut and then my bird is going here like so so let's just take the backing off these so i'm going to pop that down there like so i think maybe the background might be a little bit too busy but you know, it's done now, isn't it? Now, what did I do with my sentiment? There it is. I've already put 3D pads on my sentiment as well, just so that it lifts it off the card a little bit. So we'll just take the backing off here. And I've cut these down, so I'll cut them in half so that they fit this, fit this banner size. And then pop that down there. I'm not adding gems to this because I don't think it needs it. So there you go. Two different but similar, the same cards. But it's just, it's this set. This set is absolutely stunning. I just think it's, it's genius. It's absolute genius. I think it's amazing. So there you go. That's your hummingbird. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed doing it because I just think it's a fabulous set. Thank you so much for joining me. It was really nice to see so many of you here. So have a fabulous weekend, everybody, and I'll see you really soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.